I'm Kyle Ulfring of the SiriusXM Fantasy Drive, and I am watching the Fantasy Sports Network. Hi, this is Tony Cicada from the Fantasy Sports Network. I'm with Kyle Elfring from Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio, live from the FSTA Trade Convention. I gotta tell you, fantasy sports is at its top. It hasn't any been any better than this or more exciting. We got a 24-hour TV network coming on. You're a host on its 24-hour Sirius XM <laughs> Fantasy Sports Radio. When you were a little kid and you're growing up, did your parents say, Kyle, I hope you have a great career in fantasy sports. Now there was the push of radio, so I pulled that uh, trick off, but you talk about the growth and where we are today. I think you can make every argument that fantasy sports in this industry, uh, TV, radio, all that stuff that, that is involved with fantasy sports, is growing more than the actual sports right now. I mean, the NFL is a behemoth, and, and baseball, the NHL, and NBA, they all have their, their spot, and, and people love them and pay attention. But fantasy sports brings all of that and pushes it up another level. And I think if you looked at any kind of marketing report, numbers, money, anything that's available, you're seeing the trend up, 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 up. And leagues are slowly going up, but the industry as a whole is just going crazy to cover these sports. It's absolutely amazing. I remember as a kid, when someone told me they were going to build a gas station and they were going to sell sandwiches and hot dogs in the gas station, I thought it would never work. I thought it was the craziest thing ever. Now we have fantasy sports on TV, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Are people going to watch fantasy sports on TV? I bet people are listening or watching this and they're saying, what are they going to talk about all day? You know, how are they going to cover things all day? We have that challenge in radio and believe me, there's never a struggle. There's always people out there who want to call in, they want to discuss keeper leagues, they want to talk dynasties, they want to talk uh, you know, minor leagues, guys who are being prospects in football, you've got the combine. I mean, there's stuff every single week, month after month, day after day. So it's not tough to fill three hours, six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours. You can do it with fantasy sports all year long. It's interesting. Now, there's guys sitting in their living room watching this and their wives sitting next to them with their <laughs> girlfriend. Now, if they keep watching this channel, they get addicted to fantasy sports, will they still have a relationship at the end? <laughs> I am uh, engaged. Let's I guess see. I can speak for myself. I, I'm, I'm hoping to get married, I guess. I hope this thing, uh, the fantasy industry doesn't ruin that. But I was in the fantasy industry before I met her, so it's not a relationship destroyer. It can succeed, I guess. It definitely can, and we've seen more women, especially in fantasy football, uh, get involved. Mm -hmm. I've got emails from people, and they have an all-women's league and yep. things like that. So it's just not for the males anymore. We have women playing fantasy sports. And you go to that stereotype of, oh, they just pick their player based off the uniform color or you know their favorite number. It's not that way anymore. They're buying magazines. They're participating. They're having draft parties. You know, they're going out and getting the girls together and having a draft party. And I know every single year that passes by, and Tony, you can speak to this, you see more and more women that are involved in this industry and certainly more and more players. Uh, we do phone calls and it's not a great percentage, but I can tell year after year, every six months, more women are tuning in, more women are calling in to try to figure out what they should do, how they should set their lineup for each Sunday. Now you take calls and people call 24 hours a day, seven days a week to mm -hmm. Sirius XM Fantasy Sports Radio. What kind of questions do you get excited about and certain types of questions you get tired of? How does the fantasy sports industry, as far as the questions that you get from the people out there playing the games? The questions that you get tired of are very easy to choose for me. Um, people love quarterbacks and they will always want to take quarterbacks and they place the utmost importance on having a stud quarterback and we get that constantly. And, and our show in particular for four years has sworn up and down time and time again, stay away from the QBs, you know, let them come to you late. We get that question constantly. People love asking about dynasty leagues in football when we all know in the NFL, you're lucky if you've got a guy who's worth keeping two years, let alone three years. The injuries and the way things happen just destroy items. In terms of what do I like to hear, what are the questions that I love getting, I love hearing I lost this baseball player and I need to know is this minor leaguer somebody I can choose to fill in or hey I've got these five guys I'm looking at on the waiver wire break them down for me tell me tell me their pluses their minuses where they can help me it's kind of just throwing a bunch of guys at you and picking and choosing 
each of their attributes. Those are fun things to do in the fantasy industry. You're watching Tony Sakata, Kyle Elfrick on the Fantasy Sports Network, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're here giving you the greatest fantasy sports information on the planet, and we're all fired up. Before I let you go, I gotta ask you, what about when you get that occasional off sport? The NASCAR <laughs> question, the hockey question, how do you handle that? Well, we've got a rule. I'll handle the NBA on the show. Ray Flowers, my co-host, will handle the hockey. And the NASCAR will quickly flip to the internet and find out what's going on. Or we'll say, hey, I love his sponsor. I love the M&Ms this week. Go with the M&Ms. NASCAR hasn't reached that level yet, but I bet five years from now, Tony, we're sitting here talking about the number 14, you know, Valvoline oil car. It's going to go in that direction.